the show and the arc that you kind of followed was that it was kind of inspired, at least from what we feel like, by a fairly, fairly recent arc in the comics, being Night of the Owls, Court of the Owls. So it, it, it's kind of a new area of Gotham, but at the same time, it's an old idea about Gotham. How, how was it getting involved in, in the whole idea that, how much fun was it to play a role that's kind of double-sided, where you've got this deep, dark side, and then you've got this, you know, kind of political, positive face side of the world. Two different kinds of darkness. There was a deep, dark side, and then the deeper, darker side. Um, I didn't know anything. I mean, the, the character is kind of invented for the show, and they do a really good... Can you hear me? Can, we, can you hear? Can you go up a bit? Can you hear me now? It's like that ad. Can you hear Bueller? me? Oh, now I can hear you. How about at the back? Can you hear me? Because I can't say it twice. I, I don't. <laughs> I forget. Um, they, so they did a really good job. Bruno and the writers did a really good job of uh, keeping the character secret. I knew I was in for a certain amount of time. I didn't know who I was. I found out just before the Woodens did. Um, there's a super exciting thing that happened, which is um, if, if, if everyone's caught up with where we are, this guy. This just killed me. Sorry. But... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, but then they bring me back. Hugo Strange has this fantastic laboratory, which I'm very in favor of. And he brings people back from the dead. And he brings Galavan back um, as a DC villain. I think we all know what that is from the end of last week's episode. It's Azrael. Yeah. 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 How much fun was it to suit up for? So much fun. So much fun. I think but the most fun I had was uh, doing the sword fight with Arthur. Yeah. Anyway, that's is that enough to answer your question? Yeah, that's good. We don't, I'm sure there's many, many questions. questions. I'm just Go gonna on. ask a few questions because I'm such a super fan, and then we'll hand it over to you guys. We'll do some Q and A for sure. Um, Rob. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> okay. The Penguin, who we've always known is one of Batman's, you know, you probably put him number two behind the Joker as yeah. far as the rogues gallery, right? At least in terms of longevity, too, because I think he came in, I think it was maybe the second year after yeah, the yeah, comic started. Year, yeah, it was fairly like 40, 48, 46 yeah. or 48. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Uh, he's a character that's been around, and he's known, but not until maybe Batman Returns did they kind of dive in a little deeper to his history and what made him what it what he is, but you have had so much time to really, more than anyone else ever, dive into this character. How has that been? It's been amazing. It's Well, and also, like, you know, to talk about Batman Returns, you know, brilliant, brilliant movie, brilliant performance by Danny DeVito, but also, um, it was very much a Tim Burton reimagining of the character. I mean, he was raised by actual penguins, I'm just like, you know, it's a very Tim Burton thing to do, which is absolutely brilliant. But, you know, it really didn't get into, so, so it didn't touch on how the penguin was traditionally portrayed in the comics, which is more what we're trying to go back to with Gotham, and, you know, show him as an actual human being raised by other human beings in Gotham City, yeah. It's just been so much fun how unpredictable you've made this character. Well, I give that, and you know, I give all the credit to Bruno Heller and our incredible writing staff. And, and you know, it really started starts with them, and you know, the the deviousness, the the machinations of Penguin all starts in Bruno's head, and then you know, filters through whatever weird stuff I can bring to the set. You know? <laughs> There's never been really such a young characterization of the Penguin. Like, True, yeah. to take the idea that he worked his way up and we get to see, you know, from fish working on up, that's a really cool it's thing. It's so brilliant and you really don't ever get the opportunity to play a character that everybody has grown up with and knows about and then to be able to bring to light things that people had never heard of or never thought of or imagined before is really an amazing gift. So, yeah. Even as the villain of the show, you're kind of the hero in a way. Like, it's so weird. I don't know about me. Me personally, I, I root for you. And, I, you know, the, the whole season has been very difficult. Yeah. To watch you have to take the flack you took from the kind of the in laws or whatever you call them. Yeah, right. It, it was tough. Like, every episode, I'm like, just crack. Just lose. 
person. <laughs> like, yeah. And then you finally really cracked, yeah, and it was really. beautiful. It's how is it riding that edge? Oh my gosh, it's brilliant. And then anytime, I mean, as an actor, you want to play the whole spectrum of you know emotion, you know. And then when they gave me, when they told me where we were going with having him being brainwashed and having all of the, the just all of the negativity sort of washed away, I was so thrilled because then. Then I could really, and you know, we always touched on it since the beginning. Is like bringing some sort of uh, sympathy to his character, and and acknowledging that you know, had things gone very differently for him, he not necessarily he, he wouldn't have ended up you know, being you know the devious murderer that he is. You know, and it's, it, there's something to be said, like like anyone. It's like that's how life, that's how your environment shapes you and becomes you, how you become who you are in the world. Um, but yeah, when, when, we, when we got to show him as like, as if, yes, as if people were only kind to him his entire life and he, you know, there's like a, a you know, a, a beautiful, kind person underneath all of it, I thought it was just a brilliant, brilliant right. opportunity. Right, well everybody knows that DC has the greatest villains on Earth. Uh, James, coming into it, uh, First of all, how'd you get involved with the show, and did you know that you would be playing a villainous role that you were going for? Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, I've got to say, just going on from that, I think Penguin is the, the, the real star of the show in terms of, isn't he the one you're rooting for? You're kind of rooting for him, <laughs> even though I, I hate him. <laughs> okay, it's just, it's, that's the achievement, not only of Robin, but, but of the, the writers, and. It's, it's such a complicated, clever thing that they've done to make the, the bad guys, people that you're interested in, you have this much information about. Um, I, I knew I was some kind of bad guy going in. I didn't know what. The, the story unveiled of this weird, the weird monks. The strange, what's up with the monks? The monks showed up. I'm like, oh, this is your monkish order. I'm like, of course it is. Well, there you are. I knew something was missing. Um, and so that was awesome. And it's just, they, they have so much story to play with. There's so much in the mythology, and they've done such a good job of kind of making this its own entity, but that honors the, the mythology of, of Batman. And so I think that's what people appreciate about the show. And they have space to be creative and, and introduce new characters and new ideas. Um, is, so it, like that. is it hard to ride the level of not going too far? Um, what do you mean? As far as What's when you're far? a villain, it's easy to be like, ah, I'm the villain. And there's no too far. There's no too far. There's no you too never far. feel like you gotta rate it, they just let you go, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much, yeah. <laughs> like Fish, like, yeah. that was an out there character. Oh, that yeah. was just over the top, and that's what was fantastic about it. Just unabashed, just go for it. Yeah? She, yeah, yeah, she really brought something special to the show. And, and thankfully, I mean, it's not, it's already been spoiled, but she, she'll be back for the last two episodes. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, woo. So, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't saying. We have some friends <laughs> together. He didn't say. That's all his fault. <laughs> I guess he said that. How much do the comics come into it? I know probably more when you started. You probably did your Penguin research. But as far as when you joined up, did did Night of or the Court of Owls come up? Or they like this is something that kind of comes from this? Dude, I was working in the dark. Is what I'm pointing oh, yeah? I really had no idea. Right, so right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I found out as soon as they released the script. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I wonder how much the comics come into it. Like how much? Very much, actually. I can I can confirm that uh, Jeff Johns, the head of DC, signs off on every script. Oh, really? So he everything is filtered through him, so that we make sure that you know. Obviously, with any sort of Batman interpretation.